Steam locomotives in miniature at the Steam Workshop. This is part 24, the final episode, completing the Chubb locomotive. But before I can call the locomotive complete, I need to fit an injector, which is shown on the left-hand side of the picture, and a blow-down valve, which is shown on the right. And once these parts are fitted, if they work okay, which I'm sure they will, I can do a proper steam test. And the job begins by removing the floor. The way it worked out with this small piece of floor is that even without taking off the hand wheel, you can lift it up and rotate it to allow access to the blowdown valve. I'd love to say this was intentional, but no, it just worked out that way. So very slowly and very carefully, I'm removing the old clack valve. Anticipating a gush of water out of the boiler, underneath, out of shot, is a plastic pot to catch the water, and here it comes. And the water looks quite clean, but believe me it isn't clean as you'll see in a moment. It's very important to always have a blowdown valve in a steam locomotive boiler, because without a blowdown valve, eventually you will get deposits forming around the inner and outer firebox, and these deposits will eventually settle around the foundation ring. The small gap all the way around the inner firebox to the outer firebox must not be filled with any particles whatsoever, just the water. In the last steam test, the first thing that happened was the blower blocked up. And this is why. Look what came out of the boiler. Lots of small particles. And here's the blowdown valve I'm about to fit. It's a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch blowdown valve. And I'm just treating it to some Loctite 542 so it will never leak. This view from underneath the engine, with the engine up on its nose, shows the arrangement of the blowdown valve. And this is the injector. And here is the injector compared to the original. This one is a Jubilee fittings injector, and I've used these over the years, and I've had many of them, and they never fail, they always work. You will notice that the cones are removable, and do they go in the other way around? Well, no. One of them does, but the other one is larger, so you can't get it wrong. Both of these cones look very similar, but they are entirely different. This clip, once again from underneath the engine, shows the injector in position. It's the same physical size as the previous one, so it fits in position no problem at all. There's one more small job to do, and that is to cap off a redundant outlet on the turret. And for this, I just threaded a piece of brass hexagon bar, parted it off, and fitted it in place. And now it's outside into the yard, on a day when it's about to really throw it down with rain. So I have a bit of a problem on this test. I need to really keep my eye on the job. A steam test is quite an important part of the rebuild, and at the same time, I don't want to get my camera wet. So I've set up the engine just outside the front door, and the camera is just inside the front door, so it's not an ideal scenario for making a video, but that's the way it is. It's also quite windy today, so by putting the camera in a sheltered place, it avoids the wind noise. In no time at all some steam is raised, just using the charcoal and paraffin mixture, and the whistle blows quite well at very low pressure. But as soon as the pressure got to 30 pounds per square inch, I let the fire go out. And where's all the steam coming from? Well, what you can't see is I'm blowing down the boiler, in an attempt to clear any potential residue left in there. And after I emptied the boiler, I refilled it with some clean water, and with the help of Dave at the steam workshop, with his shovel on fire with paraffin and charcoal mixture, the fire was relit, and once the boiler reached working pressure, I tried the injector, and you can hear me talking on the soundtrack. The voice you can hear is from a man called Mark, who's a carpenter and does quite a lot of work around the steam workshop. So the injector works perfectly, but the engine was still reluctant to run. When I opened the regulator, it started to run and stopped, so it's time for drastic measures. I lifted the engine off the rolling road and put it down onto the track. And what I'm actually doing in this clip is running the engine back and forth on the short piece of track. As I run the engine forward, I open the regulator. And in no time at all, the engine starts pulling under its own steam. So there are still some particles going down the steam line to the cylinders. So here's my theory or guess as to what's happening. Originally the steam blower blocked up. Those were particles from within the boiler in the wet steam line but the rest of the particles I think are pieces of shale that are coming from inside the tube following the silver soldering job that was done to the superheater combining pipe. And these random particles get underneath the slide valve and lift them off the seats. There's no power, just a lot of steam going up the chimney. 
In no time at all though, the slide valves reseated and the engine pulled very well. So I put it back on the rolling road and here it is running. I've got my hand in the cab at the moment because I'm closing the water bypass valve from the axle pump. And yes, the water starts to go up the water gauge, so the axle pump works as well. And the mechanical lubricator that I adjusted in an earlier video is working beautifully. In this part of the clip, I'm opening the injector steam valve. And my right hand, which you can't see in the clip, is operating the water valve. If I stop talking and you listen carefully, you can hear the injector injecting. The rush of steam that you can suddenly hear came from the injector because the water tank feeding the injector is empty. And I forgot to open the water bypass valve from the axle pump, so the boiler is very full at the moment. At this stage it had started raining outside, so I quickly blew down the boiler and we took the engine back into the workshop. I'm still not happy with the performance of this clack valve. This is the clack valve that the injector is connected to, and in a previous episode I remachined the internal seat of this valve. But in the end I decided that it was a good idea to fit a replacement. And that's about it for the rebuild of this tube locomotive. Rebuilding this engine using these parts. Looking back at episode 1, I really had forgotten how bad this engine was, and as you can see, it was pretty terrible really. And the finished locomotive is not perfect, but it's a very handy little locomotive for anyone who needs one that you can put in the back of the car, run around the track for the afternoon, put it back in the car and take it home. And without getting a hernia, because when it's not full of water, it's not very heavy, and by the way, I got the weight completely wrong. I assumed when I put it on the weighing scales that the weighing scales were calibrated in kilograms. No, it's pounds, so the engine doesn't weigh 80.6 kilograms, it weighs 80.6 pounds. And I really am sorry for the incompetence. Please read that as incompetence and not incontinence. The early parts of this job were not a lot of fun at all, particularly this. I seem to be permanently in the cleaning bay. It needed three coats of paint stripper to remove the original paint because on the boiler wrapper the paint was really well baked on. Once the job was finished I said to Simon, did you give me this engine as a test just to make sure that I could actually do it and I wasn't making it up as I went along? And Simon said no, he gave me the project because he thought it would make a good video. And I think he was right, here's the finished product. And today just before the steam test it was photographed and it's going on the website shortly. Coming up next at the Steam Workshop. This is a Garrett traction engine, and this is in a bit of a state too, and it's big. This is going to be a team effort, pretty much like the chub between Dave at the Steam Workshop, who does most of the painting, and myself. The slight problem is, the young man who dismantled this engine no longer works at the Steam Workshop, and he neglected to take photographs of the disassembly process. So it's a bit of a guesswork job really, but as I said before, I like a challenge. This is the bunker tank on the bench. It's now in a bath of caustic soda because the paint was so difficult to remove after being baked on for many years. And there are a lot of parts for this engine. Here are just a few of them. These are the smaller parts. And these are some of the larger parts. So this job is going to be fun. I use the word fun lightly. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.